Hey folks, welcome back to the studio. Today we are starting a project that uh, is going to be a table and a bench. To start the project, we're going to be installing V-stabilizer bars. We're gonna talk about how to do that and uh, just give you some tips and tricks there and uh, stay tuned. Okay, so why use V-stabilizer bars? We all understand that, that wood is an organic product. It is going to flex and give a stabilizer bar that is set down into the, the bottom of the tabletop. Um, and, you know, so what we're going to do is actually route a channel for this to sit into, okay? And um, that just gives so much stability and you know obviously once this is installed everything is going to be flat it's going to be straight um, and it can still give and and take a little bit with the the moisture and the humidity and all of that good stuff but um, it just adds a, a a real rigidity to a tabletop that it wouldn't other otherwise have so now how do we do this the bit on osbornwoodproducts.com is number nine eight nine as you can see that's going to just cut that channel there for that we're going to be using a plunge router um, depending on what equipment you have you may choose to do that differently um, in my opinion plunge router is probably the the quickest and easiest when you get a 989 bit okay this has a 12 millimeter shaft on it we recommend actually getting a 12 millimeter collet for your router to go with this bit. Um, now this is going to be router specific, right? Okay, so you're going to have to get with the manufacturer of your, your router and find um, a collet that actually is 12 millimeters. This bit is not exactly as wide as the metal, okay? That's a big piece of metal, it's wide, okay? And that bit would have to be huge <laughs> to handle all of that. So you actually have to make two passes. The first thing I'm going to show you on how to do these V stabilizer bars would be like a jig. Your jig is obviously going to be router specific, okay? Um, because each router base is a little bit different width probably and you know, your bit and your metal are constants but that is going to be a variable that you have to kind of figure out. So you're just going to kind of, you know, figure out the width of the bit, figure out the width of the metal, and then just add that, that width to whatever your base is. If you make this jig longer than the width of any tabletop that you would ever foresee making, then later you can just take another cross piece and set that in for a shorter width there. I'm just going to do this one with a, a straight edge for you. So I just took a, a, a scrap piece of wood, uh, ran it across my joiner, made sure it was nice and straight and um, yeah so I'm just going to lay out where I want these and, uh, and we'll get started on that. All I've done is figured the center of the table and centered this. I'm actually going to just kind of draw that on now I'm going to figure where I want my pedestals and where I want the other stabilizers over here. I'm going to put these three inch in from the outside edge. Uh, here again, I've just centered it to each side. I've got my three inch lines. And here again, I'm just drawing that out. You can run this full depth. You can go a partial depth. Obviously, the harder you would, the, the <laughs> more passes you want to make and the slower you want to go with it. Let me get some C-clamps and I'm going to clamp my table to my workbench so that it can't go anywhere. And then I'm going to clamp this uh, to the, the table top.
Good, okay, that turned out right on our line, so that's great. Let's just move that over 5 sixteenths and we'll, we'll finish up. Screws. We do not provide screws with these because there's going to be so many variations um, that you have. Get this centered, okay, and put the screws in the center. If you notice, that center hole is actually just a hole, whereas the others are slots. The reason being, if you go ahead and and tie that center down pretty tight, then what you put into your slots uh, is going to be not loose, but not as tight as you can get it, if that makes sense. Um, the thinking being that um, these may be able to move. I would recommend a pan head screw um, that gives just a, you know, a little bit better, uh, that mushroom head will kind of give a, a better coverage there. So. That's all we're doing. Um, I'm just gonna double check, make sure that these are centered. Okay, those are down in there and then these we're just gonna get snug, okay? And here again, I'm leaving these close to the center of that slot, okay? I'm excited about this build. This is gonna be a, a, a really nice table, I think. This takes your table to the next level uh, in quality, in longevity. You know, it, it's just a great system. It, it's worth the time. Uh, it's not a quick, super easy, you know, process, but but it's simple and it, it's, uh, it's doable. Um, as you can see, just in a, a simple home shop, this tabletop should like last literally forever. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to, uh, to get to the next step. We're going to actually put some pedestals on here. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, we've got a bench uh, to go with it. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's gonna be a really good build. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. All of the product links are going to be down below. Okay, so check those out. Uh, get on the website and, um, and see how you could use those products in your next build. As always, if you would uh, like, subscribe, and share, okay? If you haven't already, um, tell your friends about uh, these cool videos and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on The Builder Studio.